I'll kind of dive right into the discussion. Um, I'd like to start off with uh, Omar yourself, and let's talk a little bit about the, the current trends uh, in the innovation ecosystem in Dubai. So firstly, thank you so much. When we look at the digital economy in uh, Abu Dhabi and the UAE, the reason why we're so AI ready in um, Abu Dhabi and UAE is the fundamental principles of uh, the region having the first Ministry of AI, the first University of AI, and these are examples of trends in which we're incubating and accelerating AI economy scale in a big way. When you look at worldwide technologies, one of the largest privately owned technology companies in the world, US centric, and we've made our international hub uh, Abu Dhabi uh, as a whole, that is because we've seen the similarities and the synergies in which uh, us being an AI leader in driving AI globally, it sits perfectly well with Abu Dhabi and UAE being the very clear future-proof vision and strategy which is fueled by innovation and incubating a whole behemoth of value around AI innovation and the infrastructure has really quantum leaped other legacy areas. So in my opinion, we are striving towards a very AI ready economy and that has attracted true leadership around the world from the incredible leadership from the UAE that has embraced it, invested heavily and provided the best platform for organizations like Worldwide Technologies to make this our international hub. And I truly believe the AI economy will be in Abu Dhabi as the global hub as a whole. Uh, Professor Marwan, we all know Khalifa University is such a titan uh, within the Abu Dhabi ecosystem. So I would be really interested in hearing sort of your thoughts around, you know, the current trends in the innovation ecosystem in Abu Dhabi from an educational institution perspective. Yeah, so um, a lot of things have happened the last three years. As you know, um, there was a setup of what we call the Advanced Technology Research Council in Abu Dhabi with three pillars, one uh, called the Technology Innovation Institute that was part of that uh, uh, journey. Now I'm in Khalifa since a couple of months, uh, Aspire and Venture One. And what we saw in the last three years is a massive investment today in various domains related to technology. Of course, uh, as Omar was saying, AI has been at the center of a lot of things uh, quite recently. Uh, the Technology Innovation Institute, and it was part of that story, released the first uh, basically large language model in Arabic called Noor. And just um, now, last year, uh, we've been hearing basically about uh, the next large language model, large language model, which was ranked top one basically as an open source model in the world called Falcon. And uh, just yesterday, there was also an announcement of a company related to that. And so what's interesting is that we're seeing a very nice story being built here where we're having research institutes which are creating breakthroughs in terms of technology, Falcon being one of them. And now recently also companies, basically where the tech transfer is built on those companies and now going on. That company that was announced yesterday, by the way, is called AI71. And so I think this is a great momentum that we're seeing. And um, there was an, an article in The Economist uh, a couple of days ago. Say, an economist is known basically to at least proofread their, its article saying that uh, the UAE is basically the third, I would say, innovative economy in the AI realm. US being the first, China being the second. So that's also a testimony of basically the kind of work which is being done. At university level also, um, there's been a lot of research intensive universities. I think I saw the shift from going more on an educational perspective to more research intensive. Khalifa is one and BZUAI is one. Um, NYU Abu Dhabi is also another one. And we're seeing, seeing many universities that are not just looking at rankings in terms of publications, but also looking now at how to do the tech transfer of what is being done in the labs of the various professors and researchers in those institutions. I would love to hear your take on this. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the organizing the panel. So how I see from my angle is, let's say, how we see the innovation in, in general coming and how this impact the digital economy. So it's a multitude of parameters that you know contribute. 
Part of it starts always with the academia, because where we build talent, we build the research, fundamental research that can help later on to build knowledge for the country to drive. And then the second part going to the startup ecosystem, where our fast mover, very fast pace to innovate, less constraint. And that, you know, what have been happening here in Abu Dhabi and the UAE, example of Hub 71 and other ecosystem. So all the ecosystem available around the uh, tech startups is available right now. And then when we want to scale the startup, we need another bigger ecosystem that is the large enterprise, all the big customers in the world. And that's why the companies like WWT, where Omar is here, is helping to take innovative ideas that they are very fast in the execution to a larger scale by accessing to customer, to labs, to testing, to partners in order to do it fast. And if we don't have the whole, uh, let's say, pieces coming to in place, it's gonna always, you know, slow, not working perfectly. So I believe what's happening today in the UAE and in Abu Dhabi is we were able to put all the pieces together in one ecosystem where everyone is contributing, but also everyone is benefiting much more than contributing by all working together from academia, from capital, from big companies to startups. So that's uh, how we see it. Amazing. So speaking of uh, everybody contributing and collaborating, we've seen the impact of you know, public-private sector partnership on the economies globally. And you know, speaking of examples, sitting here in ADGM, we've seen the impact of you know giants like ADGM and Hub 71 on Abu Dhabi's economy. So, Professor Marwan, I would love to hear your perspective on the impact of collaboration, you know, between educational institutes, corporations. Are there any specific success stories or examples you'd like to talk about? Yeah, of course. Um, um, first of all, basically, the, co the collaboration in general are based basically on the capability of getting at, this, at the same how know how but also external funding to form the talents that we're having. And of course, a lot of, of, of effort has been done at least at the Abu Dhabi level because that's uh, basically the, the place which I know very well. And of course, funding the different institutions, especially universities. So for example, TII has been a very good research arm from that point of view in basically building some bridges with many universities in funding large uh, programs on a, on a large scale. I'm at the moment basically running a 6G center. We're opening also what we call a 6G chair. And a 6G chair is a very good example where uh, there is some effort to attract top talent talents coming for one year to two years, working here in the UAE, bringing their network, and basically being able to form our students, basically, and, and having basically the capability to do PhDs in collaborations. And I think that's at the heart. Every type of collaboration that you're doing either with industry or even with academia is extremely important to get basically the knowledge and the latest knowledge and know-how. And I think the trick is now being well done at the moment in terms of how these things are being built and how these research programs within a three year to five year time frames where PhDs are formed within these programs. Yeah. Dr. Abed, your perspective? Yeah, uh, so uh, w when you see from the innovation part and the academia, so it's always, I remember back in the time when, you know, the launch of the MBZ UI University, everyone was, you know, saying that, you know, AI university stand alone, don't doing mathematics, physics, engineering. People were not understanding how big the AI will be and how specialized it it's gonna come over time. So now we see even in the AI, now we are start having disciplines, generative AI, and even with generative AI, Professor Marwan can talk a lot about this, we have sub-disciplines. So now everyone start understanding what happened at that time, that if you want to thrive, you have to have specialization. And having that very specialized talent available in the country, that's faster, in the long term, the whole innovation ecosystem. And from there, if we have the universities, we're gonna attract students abroad coming to the country, and then they will start working, then they will bring you know, their network coming in. But also in the university is not only about the student, but also all the researchers, professors coming all over the world. So an example of TII, where we have, I think, more around a thousand researchers coming from all over the world, coming to Abu Dhabi. 
And that's if you see just the second level network, we are talking about tens of thousands of all smart talent that we can bring to the country. So at the end, you know, everything starts with the academia, education, showing that there are fundamental changes happening in this country, and then we build on top of that. So that's why the world of academia innovation and how can support and benefit to the both the tech startup ecosystem, but also the large companies in terms of resourcing, that's, I think, really important for driving the economy and the digital economy forward. So talking about driving the digital economy forward, I think um, all I'm hearing is opportunities, opportunities, opportunities. So starting with you, Ahmad, I think my next question is going to be around that. You know, how do you see, what kind of opportunities or challenges do you see for the Abu Dhabi digital economy, let's say in the coming years, and how can sort of stakeholders address them effectively? So I think the number one thing is, when you look at the digital economy of Abu Dhabi, we have, as the world's largest privately owned technology company, have the biggest innovation hub incubator. We've made our home Abu Dhabi from an international perspective, and from that, we're already incubating startups. We've driving Abu Dhabi-based startups, accelerating time to market, accelerating innovation in a heterogeneous way. And we've been successful doing that with Dr. Abid with Open Innovation. We've been successful with uh, the whole TII area, the AI-17, G42, the whole ecosystem as a whole, because it's all propelled with the right platform, a platform which this incredible leadership has given with a very future-proof viewpoint. And then where we've driven in is the, the cultural alignment is correct. And where you've got the cultural alignment correct, where you have the best practices in place, the best facilities, the safest city to live, it's growing and it's creating a digital economy, but the same way it's driving the Silicon Valley ecosystem and values that Silicon Valley has done. So with that in mind, you end up accelerating innovation. And we've done that in the last 18 months by establishing our global hub here. And it's not a regional hub, it's a global hub because Abu Dhabi's economy is a global hub. It's the capital of capitals and it's enabled through the AI destination because it's seen as the third biggest pillar in AI. So when you're looking at those areas and you're seeing the facilities, the infrastructure, the diversity, as well as the readiness from an AI point of view, we have brought our labs in here, we have brought the ecosystem, worked with the leadership, and we've already done test results which have been very, very impactful, such as working with AI-17 to look at the Falcon LLM and scale it. How do we drive the digital economy, bringing these best of class people together, using WWT's labs, our advanced technology center, and enabling Made in Emirates? And I think all of these ingredients, as long as we keep striving, collaborating, and accelerating innovation, this will continue to strive, and this will continue to make sure that the UAE is always number one with AI. And that's why we truly believe that, and we're here today, and we have done examples of that with Open Innovation, with Khalifa University as well, and the other sectors, and the results are now seen. The results are now at a global scale where excellence is portrayed and results from a proof of concept perspective is scaling in a big economy way. You're seeing large hyperscaler AI companies out of the digital economy of Abu Dhabi, striving in the US, striving in, in, in the global presence and also competing. Falcon LLM is best in class. You know, we've invested heavily to bring our 33 years of innovation and building the Fortune 80s, AI capabilities, all the hyperscalers, largest hyperscalers in the world, we drive the AI. And what have we done? We've made our home Abu Dhabi. There's a reason for that. It's talent, it's culture, it's a future-proof vision, and it's true innovation, which allows time to market in a very accelerated, but incredibly fair way. And that's what I love. The core values align. And from a cultural point of view, it's very exciting when you have the ability to move at agility, which other economies don't. Amazing. Uh, I would love to continue this conversation. I've got many more questions planned, but that's uh, all the time we have for today. Thank you.
Uh, thank you so much to my wonderful panelists. A big round of applause, audience. Thank you so much. Thank you, Omar. Thank you, Dr. Abe. Thank you, Professor Marwan. Thank you to the audience.